Hello and welcome to learning how to count. You thought you learned how to count one, two, three, four, five, but that's way too slow to do stuff. This is real counting. There are four ways of counting stuff that is a little bit too quick for us. We're going to start off with the multiplication principle. When you're counting and you're uh, talking about, I don't know, fashion, how many outfits does somebody have if they have three shirts, uh, five pairs of pants, and two pairs of shoes. You're like, hmm, how many outfits do they have there? Well, if each shirt goes with five pairs of pants, well, let's think about it. We're not worried about actual fashion here. We're just counting up how many different things there were. Each shirt could go with five pairs of pants. So the first shirt, one, two, three, four, five. Second shirt, one, two, three, four, five. Third shirt, one, two, three, four, five. You get 15 just between shirts and pants. Then each outfit there could go with one pair of shoes. That'd be 15. And with another pair of shoes, you get 30. So we get this idea that in each sort of place here of what you're seeing the combination of, you're going to have 3 times 5 times 2, and that gives you 30. That's what the multiplication principle is. You could have three options in the first bin, the first spot, five options in the second one, and two in the third. Works the same with pizza. If you have uh, seven different sauces and five different cheeses and three different meats, then the number of different pizzas you could make with one sauce, one cheese, one meat becomes 7 times 5 times 3. You get 105. And you'll notice that this number comes a lot faster than just counting up, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, stuff like that. Now, another interesting thing about multiplication here is that you may be able to count very large numbers very quickly. For example, a license plate which has 7 digits in it and they can be numbers or letters notice that there are 36 options here and since you can repeat you've got 36 again 36 again 36 again wow 36 you're going to get 36 to the seventh power which is a huge number very very large indeed and you can see how many license plates california can make with numbers and letters in each of those five areas. So that's the idea of multiplication. And in the 108 textbook, when you're tutoring folks, you'll see the number of things of taking out of n things, in this case 36 in the alphabet and the numbers that we can use, to the r power. So r spots, each with n things. Now some of them are specific to the problems that you're doing and others will have a formula like that. So that's why multiplication is such a foundational thing in counting such large numbers. Which leads us to our next one. Uh, when you have something like, let's say we've got five books on a shelf, uh, books A, B, C, D, E, and we are looking for how many different ways can we take those five books and rearrange them on the shelf or mix them up. Now notice that we're talking about using this exact same group of things and rearranging it or reordering it. That would be a good word that we're going to use a lot here. Reorder this. Well, how many books can I put in the first place? Well, yeah, obviously I have five options. But if we're rearranging it, this means we are not allowing repetition of these books. We don't have a possibility of going book A, 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 A. So we've used one up. That means we only have four options in the next spot three options in the next spot, two options, and there's only one book left there. So when you use the multiplication principle and you are not allowing for repetition or replacement in your set of things that you're pulling from, you get these numbers that decrease each time because you have used one up. Well, this one turns out to be 120. The shortcut for starting in a number and going all the way down or how many uh, how many different ways a certain number, like five things, can mess themselves up is written in shorthand with an exclamation point. And that isn't five! That is five factorial. And that's what that symbol is all about. And it becomes a very shorthand for doing this. For example, if you took a seating chart with, uh, well, let's do something like that. We got what, one, two, three, four, five students across, four down. So there are 20 students in here. 20 students each with their own desk. Well, if you said how many different seating charts could you make, then yeah, 20 students could fit right there, which means 19 could fit here, 18, 17, 16, and all the way down. You have 
Shazam! That's how many different ways 20 students can mess themselves up and make a different seating chart. 20 factorial. And that's where this comes into play. That becomes a very large number that you can sit, stick into your calculator. So you should get to know where that symbol is on your calculator. Which brings us to our next item which is permutations. Now permutations like we've done before are called orderings or arrangements of things. And this is how it works. Let's say we have 23 people in uh, a club and they're going to elect a presidency that has a president, a vice president, and a secretary. Now you think about how many different ways can they do it? Certainly, how many different ways could they do a seating chart? You'd go 23 factorial. But in this one, you're going to take 23 people can be the president, 22 people can then be selected for vice president, and then 21 people can be selected for secretary. And you multiply this up and you're like, oh, you can do that. 23 times 22 times 21. Now, what this is called is a permutation, an ordering, but you're not using all of the people at once. You're only using a portion of them. You're only using three of them. And so there's an actual shortcut. This wasn't hard to go 23 times 22 times 21. We only had three numbers to do it. But what if I had something like there were 23 people in the club and we wanted to do, say, um, we had an ordering of how many people were assigned to 11 different service projects or something else. Then all of a sudden we have a whole bunch and it becomes very difficult. So we look for a formula. So if you think about this, this is the beginning of 23 factorial. That means we'd go 23, 22, 21, and so on and so forth. This is way too many. We don't want to do that. We've got to cut off from 20 and down. If I did this divided by 20 factorial, I want you to look and see how this is exactly the same thing. You have 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 on forever, divided by 20 times 19 times 18 on forever. And that just cancels with that, leaving this there. So when you only have a limited number of spots to rearrange things in, you divide by the ones you don't rearrange in. So for example 23 people were assigned to 11 different spots somewhere. Instead of going 23 times 22 times 21 and typing all that out in the calculator I'd say ooh we're going to take 23 factorial and we have to divide off the we want to keep 11 so we have to take 23 minus 11 that's a 12 factorial. So 23 factorial over 12 factorial. This is what is known as a permutation. We are talking about how many different orders, that's important, ordering, and the formula when you see it on a calculator, NPR, means that you're going to do the factorial as if you were rearranging all n of them, but you're only taking r of them, so you're going to divide off everything that you don't want to include, much like we did here or up here. So that should help you. That is what is a permutation. Which brings us to the next thing, distinguishable permutations or orderings. If I have the word listen and I say how many different ways can I rearrange it, these letters to make different words? Well, let me see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different letters. So six factorial would be how many different reorderings of this word. Okay, good. Now let's try another one, such as geese. So G-E-E-S-E. -E -E. And I say, how many different ways can I rearrange these? Well, obviously I've got five letters, so we're at five factorial. But notice that I could take these three letters right here, one, two, three, and rearrange them in any order, but you wouldn't be able to distinguish it because these three are really the same letter that have been repeated. So I would actually have to get rid of these three letters or the number of times those three mess themselves up that I can't tell about it. So this would be your answer right here, five factorial over three factorial. Let's try another one that does something like that. So what if we had something like Connecticut? 
Oh, look at this one. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 letters that we can rearrange. So just ordering them in different orders, that would be 11 factorial. However, we have to divide off everything that can rearrange itself without being distinguishable. So we have 1, 2, 3 C's. So those three C's can mess themselves up in three factorial different ways. I have to divide that off. How many O's? Just one. How many N's? we got to get rid of how many different ways the N's could rearrange themselves. And then the E, there's two T's. There we go. So 11 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. This is the number of distinguishable permutations. Let's write that down distinguishable permutations. That's what this is all about. And that'll prepare us for the next one, combinations. Which brings us to the very final thing, which is combinations. Let's take something like that we have 23 kids in a class. And we want to know how many different groups, if we break them up into groups of seven, so we're going to choose seven children to stand up and play a certain game. How many different ways could we have groups of seven? Well, if this were a presidency, we'd certainly go 23 factorial, but then chop off the uh, 23 minus 7, so 16 factorial. So this means we have kid 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that gives us these seven kids. Um, and this tells us how many different orderings. Well, now we have to worry about if we have these seven kids, how many different ways we can div mess them up that we've counted way too much on. And that is seven factorial. These kids are all doing the same thing. So we divide by the seven factorial, which is the number of ways you can mess them up. Works the exact same way in poker hands. So like if you were to take a 52 card deck and how many different ways can you hand out five cards? Well, you're right, 52. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, you're dividing off the 47 factorial. That means you're only keeping these five. But note that when you hand cards to somebody, they can shuffle them up in your hand, and it doesn't matter in which order they did. So instead of orders, we're now talking about groups. And we say, oh, if you had a king, queen, and a jack, and a 10, and a 9, how many different ways could we mess those up? Well, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We divide by that 5 factorial. So this shorthand is known as a combination of n things, 52 in this case, 23 in that case, choosing r things out of it. So how many groups of size 5 could you choose out of 52? Or 7 could you choose out of 23? And the formula looks like this. And this gets used all the time in probability when you say, oh, how many different ways could we choose three balls out of 38? Well, you do 38, choose three, and it's already accomplished all of the orderings and dividing that off. And so they'll use that very, very quickly and succinctly. And it would end up looking like this. Good.